So how you doing? Well, I'm doing all right. Well, my name is Bill Reeser. I'm the pastor of Encounter. I want to welcome everyone out to the greatest place to be on a Friday night. That's right. I want to welcome whether you're in here uh, at the Sanctuary Church in the Father's House or whether you're watching online around the country. I'm not sure if you know this, but we stream live uh, all around the country. There's friends from Kentucky, Illinois, New York, Florida watching Encounter, and we just, we're just so thankful for you. And before we get started, with tonight's talk. We're going to continue in our prayer series, and we're talking about two powerful words that you can pray, and it's just thank you. And I don't know about you, but I just woke up with a grateful heart. I'm thankful today. And when was the last time you just said thank you to God? Why don't we just take a moment right now and just tell God, thank you. Don't, don't ask him, just with your mouth. It's okay to say that with your mouth. It's okay to just clap and say, thank you, God. You're a good God. You're a saving God. Without you, I wouldn't be alive today. Without you, I wouldn't be here today. Without you, I wouldn't have my right mind today. But God is good. He is great. And I just love people who are grateful. I just love people who just know how to say thank you. And I came across a, a, a sort of a thank you note written by a senior citizen uh, the other day, and it read this. It says, I've sure gotten old. I've had two bypass surgeries, a hip replacement, new knees. I fought prostate cancer and diabetes. I'm half blind, can't hear anything quieter than a jet engine. I take 40 different medications that make me dizzy, winded, and subject to blackouts. I have bouts with dementia, have poor circulation, hardly feel my hands and feet anymore, can't remember if I'm 85 or 92. I've lost all my friends, but thank God I still have my Florida driver's license. <laughs> Not even Tiger Woods can say that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, Tiger, but, you know. But listen, think about, think about this thing called gratefulness. Think about this thing about being thankful. And we're in the middle of a prayer series. And I'll never forget, uh, a lot of you know that uh, I'm, I'm born and raised in New York City. Uh, and after I got saved, I actually was saved while I was living in the state of Kentucky, and I, I read this book called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire from Jim Cimbalo, the Brooklyn Tabernacle. And I was so excited to go visit this church that has these prayer meetings on Tuesday nights. And they have about, I don't know, three to 5,000 people that gather together every Tuesday night. And if you're not there two hours before the prayer meeting, you get shut out. You can't even get into the building. And they pray louder than they sing. And when I first started walking with Jesus, started following Jesus, I got involved with, with people that really just believed in the power of prayer. And I just wanted to be around people that prayed. I just wanted to be around people that believe that God is who he says he is, he can do what he says he can do, and who believe that we are who he says we are, and that we can do what he says he can do, and that God has, and that, that, that there's power in prayer. And when I found out about this prayer meeting that thousands of people gather on this Tuesday night, I was so excited, yet so naive. I was part of some prayer groups that already meet in the state of Kentucky, and I remember scheduling my first visit to this prayer, to this prayer meeting in, in Brooklyn, and I was so excited, and I would tell everyone in the prayer meeting, give me your request. I'm going to pray for every single one of you. I had, I had requests this long. I had people saying, you pray for this. You pray for that person. You pray for this situation. You pray for that situation. And I love doing that, and I still do. But I learned something about prayer that day. I learned something about how to come to God, how to come to God first. And, and so when I got to this prayer meeting, I'll never forget, uh, I was just so excited because I came with my list. I came ready to ask. I came ready to plead on behalf of other people. I came ready to go to the throne. I came ready to really pray really, really hard. And I remember the pastor getting up and inviting all the guys up and then everyone else up. And they gave specific instructions and said, don't ask God for anything, but just thank him for everything. Don't ask him for a single thing and just thank him. And I thought to myself, well, I could do that. I'm thankful. I thank God for my life. Thank God that I'm alive. Thank God that I'm, you know, all this and all that. And about three minutes went by, and I said, oh, let's just pray. And they said, still don't ask God for anything, but just thank him. And people started thanking God. And they were thanking him out loud. And five minutes went, 
15 minutes went, 30 minutes went, 45 minutes. And the thanks, the thank you God for saving my life, the thank you God for getting me off the streets, the thank you God for getting me off drugs, for rescuing me, for delivering me, the thanks were coming out of places that I've never heard before, and I started thanking God from a place I've never thanked him before in my life. And I just started thanking God for everything I could possibly think of, and then some. And this gratitude started welling up inside of me, and the spirit of thankfulness started welling up inside of me. And you know, we plan sets and we do things, and it started going on for maybe close to an hour, and it was as if God couldn't take it anymore. Without no one saying, let's do this song or let's do that song, after about an hour of people just thanking God, without asking God for a single thing, an eruption of worship broke out. And people just started singing and praising like never before. And I learned something that day, that God was more interested in my gratitude and praise time and thanking him more than he was in my than my prayer list. I had a chance later that night to pray for things, but it wasn't before I spent an entire evening thanking God. And I've tried to live my life like that ever since. You know, the word thanks and the word thank appears in the Bible actually more than 200 times. I'm not sure if you know that. And there's one particular phrase that was repeated at least 10 times. And that was the phrase, give thanks to the Lord our God. His faithful love endures forever. There's actually a story in 2 Chronicles 20 about this king that was facing an enormous problem, King Jehoshaphat. And there's all the armies and the enemies of God sort of made a coalition to come after Judah. And there was no way that Judah could have withstood this, this onslaught of this army that was about to destroy them. And the king gathers everyone together and he, and he, he gathers everyone for, to pray, the whole nation. And he gets up before the whole nation and he prays this one prayer. Lord, he summarized this, this, this incredible prayer with this one sentence. He said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are fixed on you. We don't know what to do, another translation says, but we're looking to you for help. And at that moment, God just showed up and spoke. It was interesting that he spoke through one of the Levites, which we're going to talk about in a second. And God said, King Jehoshaphat, this day, you won't even need to fight. The battle's not yours, but mine. Stand still and watch me win this thing for you. It was amazing. Uh, that King Josephat, right after he heard from God, got his army generals, generals together, all his army leaders together, and he said, this is the plan. Are you ready? We're going to put singers ahead of the, the fighters, and they're going to go out and meet the enemy. And you know what they sang? The first words, the song that they sang, give thanks to the Lord our God. His faithful love endures forever. At that moment, God put a spirit of confusion on the enemy until the enemy started fighting each other, until they wiped each other out. It was a great victory and a good lesson for us that the first words out of their mouth was thank, give thanks. And there was a people, group of people in the Old Testament. They were called the Levites. And every morning and every evening, they would offer up a thank offering to God. And they would actually do it several times a day. They would give a thank offering to God. We would do well to imitate the Levites, giving thanks every day to God like that, to just give a thanks offering to God. When was the last time you thought about that? But Lord, I'm just going to give you a thank offering today. I'm just going to give you my thanks today. It would change your life. And when I think about what I'm grateful for, and I've got a lot to be grateful for, but sometimes we forget just the basics for us who have decided to follow Jesus. 
And for me, the four things that always come to mind that I'm grateful for is one, I'm alive. Two, I'm saved. Three, I'm forgiven. And four, I'm going to heaven. And if I can't think of anything else that I'm thankful for, just those four things give me incredible joy and make me thankful each and every day. And I can always be thankful in my life for just those four things. If nothing else ever happens, good or bad, I can be thankful for those four things. But because of those four facts of my life, and they're the same four facts of your life, if you trusted in Jesus Christ, I could be thankful about everything else in my life. I'm thankful that I'm not only sober today, but I'm free because when the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I'm married today. I'm married 33 years by the grace of God to the most amazing woman in the world. I shouldn't be married to her. I don't deserve that. And she loves me back. I don't understand that, but I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for my daughter, my son-in-law, my two grandkids, my family. I'm just thankful for them. I'm thankful for Pastor Marty and the sanctuary. I met with him the other day. You know, it's, it's always great when you have to call a meeting just, to, just so that both of you can say thank you to each other. It was just a big thank fest. I didn't know what to do. We, we were just so happy. We didn't have nothing on the agenda. I just want to say, hey, thanks. He just said, I want to say thanks. Well, I'm more thankful. I'm more thankful. It was awesome. It was amazing. He loves what we do. And we love what he does, and we love how he supports us and this church that gives us their campus every single Friday, and we're partnering with them. I'm very thankful for that. I'm never going to take that for granted. I'm thankful for Encounter. I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful for the way that you give your time. I'm, wait, I'm so thankful how you serve here, how you give so much. I'm thankful for every single person that's ever been a part of Encounter, how you lead, how you give back, how you give away. I'm thankful for people that are here for the first time experiencing what Encounter is. It's just so much to be thankful for when you really, really think about it. And I'm thankful. And if I don't get a chance to tell you enough, I am so thankful. And I love, so, I love you guys so, so much, each and every one of you. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm just bursting with gratitude today. I'm bursting with thankfulness. And you know, when I pray for you guys, and we do pray for you guys, and I love praying for you guys, this passage in Philippians always comes to mind that the Apostle Paul wrote in the first chapter where he says, I thank my God every time I remember you. When I think about you guys, what you guys are doing, I thank God every time. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I love that's exactly how I feel about each and every one of you, and that's what I believe that God's going to do for each and every one of you. You know, God finishes his business. He doesn't, he's not a slacker. He doesn't give up halfway. He doesn't have ADHD, BVD, DVD, and all that stuff, okay? He doesn't get distracted. He finishes what he starts. So I want to ask you this. Why is it important to have this attitude of gratitude and thank God each and every day? Why is this important? Well, if you got your notes filling in the blanks, you may want to write this down. A humble attitude of gratefulness refocuses our attention to the things that really matter in life. A humble attitude of gratefulness refocuses our attention to the things that really matter in this life. You see, when we have this mindset, our gaze, what we focus on, moves away from self-centered anxiety to genuine contentment. Did you catch what I said? It moves away from self-centered anxiety to genuine contentment. Anybody need peace and contentment in their lives? Look what it says in Philippians. I, I love this version in the CEV version. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Are you ready? It's up on the screens. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Don't just go gimme, 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 gimme. With thankful hearts, 
offer up your prayers and requests to God, then because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Oh, man. And if you're new to Scripture, if you're new to studying the Bible, this is a great way to study the Bible. Look for a statement. Look for an action item of something that we're supposed to do. And then look for a promise of what God will do right after the action item. So the statement is just don't worry about anything. That's the statement. Pray about everything. That's the action item. But here's how to pray. With thankful hearts. With thankful hearts. Send your request to God with thanksgiving. And those of you that belong to Christ Jesus, those of you who have trusted in Jesus Christ, another translation says, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Here it says, and this peace will control the way you think and feel. It also says that this is peace that no one can fully understand. You won't be able to describe it, You can't explain it. You just know it when it comes on you. You just know it when that peace comes on you. Number two, when we thank God, we honor God. When was the last time you thought about, actually, how can I honor you, God? How can I honor you with my life? A lot of people think, well, if I do a bunch of things, well, if I do a bunch of good things, well, I'll serve here. Let's see, if I can serve six nights a week in church, I'm going to honor God. Okay? Okay? And then I'll go to Malibu Beach on the day off. You see, when we thank God, we honor God. Did you know that when you're truly thankful for who he is and what he's done for you, it really does honor him? And by doing so, it helps you stay on that right path. And then God reveals and unfolds his salvation plan to you day by day. I mean, you're saved instantly, but the plan of salvation, the life of salvation... What it means to be saved gets revealed to you each and every day. Look what it says in Psalm 50, 23. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. But giving thanks is a sacrifice. We're going to talk about what it means to give a sacrifice of thanks and praise in a few moments. But it says it truly honors me. Number three, it's God's will that we thank him, not only each and every day, but it's God's will that we thank him in all circumstances. Catch what I just said? It's God's will that we thank him in all circumstances. First Thessalonians. And this is, this, goes, this is one of our anchor scriptures of our 12 anchors of hope. New Living Translation says, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? Now, I'm not... That's smart, but when I read something that says this is God's will for you, it's a good idea to do it. Pretty good idea to do it. And it's a good idea to be thankful in all circumstances. I'm not thankful for the circumstances. I'm thankful in the circumstance. There's a big difference. And you may say, and you're sitting here right now, and you're in the fight of your life. Maybe you're in the pit of your life. And maybe you're saying, well, I don't have a lot to give thanks for. I'm not really feeling this thankfulness stuff. Maybe you're having financial problems. Maybe you've got some health problems. Maybe there's conflict in your family. Welcome to the human race if you're going through conflict there. (laughs) But maybe we need to get things and put things in perspective. See, the primary reason we were put on planet Earth as human beings was to glorify God and give him thanks. That's why you exist. That's why you're alive today, so that you have another opportunity to give thanks to God and to glorify him with your life. And the Bible tells us this 
over and over and over again. Psalm 107 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks. If you are giving thanks, you're going to miss out on what God has for you. Look what it says in Hebrews 13, 15. Therefore, by him. You know what by him means? With him, with his help. God wants to help you. God wants to assist you. God wants to be with you. God wants to empower you to live a life of thankfulness and gratitude. It says, therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And you know what a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of thanks is? It's a praise, it's a thanks, despite what's going on in your life. It's a praise, it's a thanks, it's a thank you, God, no matter what's going on in my life. All hell may be breaking loose, but Lord, you've already broken loose in my life, and you're above it all, and you're greater than it all. And there's a lot to teach just in this one verse. But notice in the Hebrew Scripture, it says the word continually. Did you catch that? Does it say just in the morning? Does it say just at lunchtime? Does it say just an encounter? Does it say just at what church you go to? It says we're to never stop thanking and praising God. We're to never stop giving thanks to God. We have a job to do when we wake up. We have a job to do when we come to encounter. We have a job to do when we wake up each and every day. And that's to praise and thank him with everything that we have each and every day of our lives. When trouble hits, I need to praise and thank him. When I'm down, I need to thank him. And this scripture tells me that I can praise and thank him with cancer, with a bum knee. I couldn't even walk last week. Oh, I don't even understand how I'm walking. I've been in my house all week. I can, because I, I can praise him and I can thank him because God's above any pain that I could ever experience. I can praise and thank him if my spouse wants to leave me. I can thank him if the enemy tells me to take my life. I can thank him even though I've been a victim of abuse. I can thank him and praise him even though I've had an abortion years ago. I can praise and thank him despite what I've done, despite what's been done to me, despite what I've had to go through, despite what I'm dealing with right now. I could thank him because he's greater than it all. He's above it all. And he'll work out good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. He's a good, good father. That's what he is. I could thank him when I'm broke. I could thank him when I'm rich. And by the way, I'm rich because my father owns everything. Every cattle on a hill. There you go. I could thank him when I get lonely. I could praise him and thank him despite what's going on in my life because I'm going to offer up a sacrifice of praise. Listen, I don't feel like it every day. There are times when I, ha when I go home just because that's where I live. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, it's tight, but it's right, you know. And sometimes you got to thank him. And praise him in his presence because that's where you live. That's where you're called. That's what you're called to do. See, I can praise and thank him because he's worthy of my praise. And when I operate in this attitude of gratitude, worshiping him no matter what's going on around me, guess what? God gets glorified. And when God gets glorified, he infuses his power. And his power gets activated into my life. And I need that power. Yes, being thankful and expressing our thanks to God can be a sacrifice. Because let's face it, we don't want to do it. We don't feel like doing it. There are a lot of days we don't feel like doing it. It might be because we're depressed. We're down and out. Things aren't going that well. It might be that hardship or tragedy has befallen us. Befallen us. We just don't feel like it. 
The Bible doesn't say give thanks to the Lord because you feel good. The Bible says give thanks to the Lord because he is good. And no matter how we feel, we should always give thanks in all circumstances. See, we need to put things into perspective. And that, that God is good even when things seem bad in my life. That God is always good. You know, I was rereading the story of Jesus healing the 10 lepers in Luke this week. And it's going to be up on the screens. And I got the message translation. It says, it happened that as he made his way towards Jerusalem, he crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 men, all lepers, met him. They kept their distance, but raised their voices, calling out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Taking a good look at them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. This is amazing. They yell out, fix our situation, heal us. Just have mercy on us. Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest. Because it's, it was part of the law that if you were healed of something, you would go show yourself to the priest. Jesus didn't even say, be healed. He didn't even touch him. He said, go show yourself to the priest. I, I already took care of it. And they went. And while still on their way, on their way, catch that, became clean. All ten, all ten healed of leprosy. One of them when he realized that he was healed, turned around, came back, shouting his gratitude, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet, so grateful. Catch this. He couldn't thank him enough. Did you catch? He couldn't thank him enough, and he was from Valencia. <laughs> I just had to throw one in there for Kenya country. And he, was, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, we're not ten healed. Where are the other nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? Because if you were a Samaritan, you were considered an outsider. And then he said to him, get up on your way. Your faith has healed and saved you. Oh, man, I was so moved by this Samaritan leper and the undeniable power that gratefulness has on someone's life, especially this man's life. And just thinking about that, only one out of ten lepers came back. All ten of them were healed. And that's just ten percent. Do only 10% today have a grateful heart? Is it even that high of a number? See, we live in a self-centered, narcissistic, self-entitlement world today. And I'm not talking about the outside world. I'm talking about Christianity. I'm talking about in the church. We live in a world of what have you done for me lately? And ingratitude has unfortunately gripped our society, even the church of Jesus Christ. I love this quote from Max Lucado. He said, I believe ingratitude is the original sin. I believe if Adam and Eve had been grateful for the Garden of Eden they had, they would not be focused on the one tree they didn't have. In, this, in a past issue of In Touch magazine, magazine, a gentleman by the name of Kevin Goins writes on this very subject of being grateful. He said, the famed British author, Rudyard Kipling, best known for The Jungle Book, made a fortune from his writing career. One day a reporter approached him and said, I've read that someone has calculated all the money you've made from your books, and it comes down to $100 per word. Then hoping to turn the meeting into a good story, the man reached into his pocket and said, I've reached into my pocket, I've got nothing. Okay. <laughs> a man reached into, I was hoping there would be, there'd be a bill in there. He reached into his pocket and said, here's $100. Mr. Kipling, now give me one of your $100 words. And the writer took the bill, put it in his wallet, looked at the reporter and simply said, Thanks. Thanks. 
thanks is indeed a valuable word. It's a powerful word, not just because of the, of the powerful meaning it conveys. It's a word that's, I would say, rarely spoken in today's society. It's not said enough in today's society. And strangely, ingratitude is a persistent epidemic, even in the midst of overabundance. How can we have so much, yet thank so little? I have so much, yet I thank so little. See, we find it easy to thank God privately, but what about publicly confessing our gratitude? When was the last time you did that? When's the last time your mouth just exploded with thankfulness for who God is? Not just what he does, for who he is. See, our acts of humility are a gift back to him that he delights in receiving. After all, love is a two-way relationship, isn't it? The more we seek God's presence in our lives, the more we seek him in prayer, in his word, empowered by his Holy Spirit, the more we're going to see what he's doing around us and the more compelled we are to give thanks. If you've really trusted in Jesus Christ, if you really know that your sins are forgiven, if, really, if you really know that you're going to spend an eternity in heaven, if you really know that you have the God of the universe living inside of you, empowering you, guiding you into truth, Thankfulness, gratefulness should overwhelm and flood your heart. It should be your first response. And we follow God out of that place of gratitude. That we love God and Jesus back so much that we take to heart what Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. And we do it out of gratitude, not obligation. And out of gratitude, we follow God with everything that we are in that place of thankfulness, we'll also better understand that he truly desires and he actually takes pleasure in our gratitude. Just as it means a great deal to us when our spouse or child or friend sincerely thanks us, either randomly or on a consistent basis for who we are and our acts of love. I just want to say thank you for always encouraging me and coming to me and saying thank you. I just can't thank you enough, and I don't do it enough, and I'm sorry. See, but the less we seek God, the less we'll see him. So that when he does bless us with good things, we won't be as likely to think him as the source. That's what we do sometimes. If we're not constantly seeking God, we'll miss out on how he blesses us. We'll look for the more immediate or present explanations. Like, I got the job because of the, I really, I really knocked it out on that interview. Or I was healed because I sought the best medical care available. You'll never give credit to God if you're not experiencing his presence and confessing your dependence on him. Ultimately, listen to this very carefully, you don't have to and we don't have to thank God for him to bless us. He doesn't give based on who gives him credit. Every good gift that you'll ever get in life comes from the Father above. Everything that you have comes from the Father above. Everything, everything good that you'll ever have in this life comes from the Father. You may think it's you. You may think it's you that got through that tough time during the loss of a loved one. But it was a good gift from the Father that got you through that time, whether you recognized him or not. You may think it's you that's earning that paycheck but it's God who gave you the ability to get that job in the first place and everything that you have comes from him. Your paycheck comes from heaven, not a corporation. Every good gift comes from God. But when we take his gifts and run, never confessing our gratitude and dependence by saying thank you, we're going to miss out. We miss out on hearing him say, rise up, your faith has healed you, now go. Yet when we choose to live and breathe with continuous gratitude, we free ourselves to receive the greatest gift of all, an intimate relationship with the giver himself.
And there's nothing, nothing better, nothing that can compare to being in his presence. Now, if we were to take a look at ourselves and get honest with God, many of us, including me, are no different than the nine lepers. We have a thousand things to be grateful for, but we focus on the one thing that we need. We have a thousand things to be grateful for, but we focus on the one thing we need. We cry, we pray for that one thing, even when God takes care of that one thing. We don't stop to thank him because we're now we're praying for that next one thing. That next problem. Instead of spending your time thanking him, you move on to that next problem. And I'm just as guilty of this as anybody else. I'm just as guilty of taking God's grace and how he answers our prayers for granted as anyone else. As a matter of fact, I owe some back pay in thanking God tonight. I owe him some back pay in my thanks. He's owed some thanks from me. I've not been thanking him enough. I've not been thanking him enough for you. It really is a sign of the times where we are today. That the Bible predicted thousands of years ago in 2 Timothy 3 and 5, here's what it says. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. They'll be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. You know, I always find it not odd, but whenever there's a list of, of when people do some, some things that, uh, you, you know, are just violating God's sight, disobedient to your parents is always in that list somehow. And watch this one. Ungrateful. Ungrateful. Unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. This is just my inventory. I don't know about you. Having a form, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Watch what it says. Have nothing to do with such people. Now we're talking about the church again. Did you catch that being ungrateful is right in the middle of that whole list? Did you catch the part about having a form of godliness? People in church who deny the power of God, that deny the power of the Holy Spirit, that deny miracles, that deny the gifts, that deny everything that God wants to do in your life. Oh, just give me the steps. Just give me a meeting to go to. Don't give me the power of God. I don't need a miracle in him. I don't really want to change. Because that's what they're really saying. See, but God wants to do more than change you. God wants to do more than set you free. See, God wants to really, really have an intimate relationship with you. And these people deny anything from the Spirit that leads to life because of their unbelief and ungratefulness, which will always lead to a, a life that will always become undone. That's a lethal formula. Unbelief and ungratefulness will always make your life become undone. And these are people in the church, people. And this is what Christianity is to so many. Always looking at the problem and what's missing in their lives and never stopping to thank God for even being alive. When was the last time you just woke up and say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up today. Thank you that I'm alive today. Here's what I'm thankful for right now. Just at this moment, you want to know what I'm thankful for right at this moment? I'm thankful that he loves me even when I'm not thankful. I'm thankful that he loves us even when we're not thankful. If there was ever a reason to thank him, that's a good reason to thank him. That he is thankful for you and he loves you even when you're not thankful. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you that your words doesn't say to the nine lepers, let them be plagued with leprosy again. They were were still healed of leprosy, even though they never came back and thanked Jesus. But it concerned Jesus. Jesus said, where's the other nine? Not only did it concern him, but I believe it hurt him. 
And I believe that when we're unthankful and ungrateful, it not only concerns Jesus, but it hurts him. And you know why? Because ingratitude is the first step to backsliding and walking away from God's plan for your life. Ingratitude is the first step to backsliding and walking away from God's plan for your life. So I just read a scripture in 2 Timothy that talked about the last days. Look what Paul wrote in Romans about from the beginning of time. He writes in Romans 1.20, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature so that they have no excuse for not knowing God. There's a lot to unpack there, but we don't have time to unpack it all. But watch what it says next. Next, Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God. And watch this. Or even give him thanks. Catch that? Or even give him thanks thanks. And as a result, they began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. And as a result, their mind became dark and confused, claiming to be wise, but instead became utter fools. Do you see why it's important to have a thankful and grateful heart? For our own sake, for our own salvation, our own sanity. I think it's important tonight And I'm going to challenge whether you're watching online, no matter where you are, whether you're here, to refocus and count our blessings instead of our problems. When was the last time you heard the old phrase, oh, just count your blessings? There's some benefit to that. Count your blessings instead of counting your problems. Let's tell others and God what we're grateful about instead of what we normally gripe about. Let's not be leeches, always draining and sucking the blood out of people, but thanking and building people up all the time. Someone once said, giving thanks is not a a small prayer you chant before receiving a meal. It is the way you live. Let's look at this scripture from Psalm 100, verse 4. It says this, enter his gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. So many people miss that. We think we're supposed to start with praise, with worship. But notice, thanks comes before worship. Thanks comes before our praise. Give thanks, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, And praise his name. Give thanks to him. And praise his name. Enter in his courts. Friends, I just want to challenge you to do something. Um, We're going to spend the rest of our night thanking God. Thanking God. You're going to, in a second, you're going to see a video one of the most inspiring guys I've, that I've ever learned about. And then the worship team's going to come up after the video. But I want to challenge you to do something different tonight. And while the worship team is up here tonight, I want to challenge you to get up out of your seat. I want to challenge you to do something that's going to be uncomfortable to do. I want to challenge you to come to this altar and not ask God for anything. While they're singing, I want to challenge you to come up here and get on your knees if you physically can. And I don't want you to ask God for a single thing. And while they're playing, I want you to just thank God. You want to do it in your seat? Go ahead. But I want you to verbally thank God. I want you to thank Him like you've never thanked Him before. And like I said, one of my heroes was this guy, Ed, whose life can be summed up in one word, and that word is thankful. In the morning, um, 
first thing he says to me is, okay, which means he needs his nighttime breathing machine turned off. He can't do that by himself. Now, I have lots of problems. Whatever you think about doing yourself during the day, that's what I help him with. As his needs grow, I do have some times where it's hard to be thankful. I always believed in the resurrected Jesus, but now I'm attracted to the suffering Jesus. I think suffering either makes you angry or grateful. And I'm grateful for Lorna. Thank you. You're welcome. You want a kiss? <laughs> oh, can't do it so close. <laughs> I think I learned gratitude from African Americans who have been through slavery, discrimination, and racism even today. One day, a communication was circling around the inner city, and uh, it was basically from it. And I said, I'll go, but it's just a white boy trying to show some relationship with some black folk. But he captured my attention. <laughs> I was not the same fella when the meeting was over. We were brothers, right? We are brothers. Now, I didn't know that he was a forerunner in my life with the same disease. Pastor Rhodes has been a friend for many, many years. Ed would preach in his church even up till the time of Dr. Rhodes' diagnosis. I wouldn't wish ALS on my worst enemy. And to be a close friend, I couldn't believe it. I asked him to preach my funeral and he asked me to preach his. He claims I'm half black, though I don't look it. <laughs> You will not have to be in a black church very long before you hear someone say to God, thank you for waking me up this morning. From slavery until now, that's been in our makeup. Ed said to us, white folk don't say thank you for waking me up this morning but he's incorporated it because without the grace of God, uh, you would remain in the very image of death.
The more I struggle, the greater the gratitude. Because there's so much I can't do. So I focus on what I can do. And that gives me gratitude. Sunday, this young woman, 14, 15, she's leading us in prayer. She says, Lord, we have been bothering you about making our pastor well. But this morning, we want to thank you. He can still walk. He can still talk. Thank you for the things that are right in his body. So, you know, we all was wrecked by then. <laughs> in the epistles, uh, the verse says, in everything give thanks, not for everything give thanks. I'm not thankful for ALS, but in the midst of it, I can be thankful. It's good. Yeah, that was good. This is my testimony. You know he woke me up early this morning, and I was closed in my right mind. If I'm blessed to be here tomorrow, I will be grateful. I mean, really grateful because my jar got some cracks in it. Ed's jar has got some cracks in it. But the real treasure can't be damaged. Can't be damaged. Live for today. Enjoy whatever your circumstances and go to man and wake up and pray. Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning.